Welcome to Practical Witch Talk. I'm your host, Freddie Gladhart, author of The Practical Witch's Almanac and instructor at witchacademy.org. This podcast is about using magical terminology, such as manifestation, while still holding on to and spreading harmful and privileged concepts, albeit unintentionally, that stuck in our subconsciousness from mainstream religion. So being a witch in the Bible Belt has always been a unique type of adventure for me, and you might assume that some of the biggest challenges I face are coping with evangelicals. But surprisingly, it's not the practicing Christians. It's the message they've left behind in their wake that ripples through the pagan and metaphysical community. So it's story time. I moved to Arkansas over a decade ago and bought some land to create a teaching garden and sanctuary for witches and a permanent home for the Witch Academy witchacademy.org. Last month, I was having a conversation with a woman I'd met at a metaphysical bookstore. I was sharing information about the sanctuary and how things have been progressing steadily on the property, albeit very slowly. I explained that I would love it if other pagans and witches would drop portable cabins onto the property. Those ones that you see on the side of the road that they're selling where you can get you know, weekly or monthly payments or just spend like $6,000 outright and get a cabin. They would be able to stay in these cabins for Sabbaths, workshops, festivals, and other gatherings. And then the rest of the year, they could list them on Airbnb or something like that and generate some passive income for themselves, thereby enriching the pagan community as a whole. But there has been very little interest in doing this uh, from the pagans that I've spoken with and the witches I've spoken with. And the few that did try have given me a great deal of trepidation about uh, going further with it and some unbelievably wild stories that I will share for another time because I don't want to digress too far. I was, so I'm, t- I'm talking to this woman in the bookstore. I'm telling her about my plans to try to put up a cabins myself as I've uh, altered my plans because of the lack of interest and the scary stories. <laughs> so I was telling her that putting up the cabins myself was going to be much more slow of a progress because I'm on an extremely modest budget. And here's where the story takes a dive into the wake of this woman's evangelical upbringing. She says, well, if you're a powerful witch, you can just manifest wealth. And a holy strawberry twizzlers in my burrito. I don't even know where to start to unpack the toxicity of this new age winging concept. It smells so strongly of white privilege with a top note of entitlement and a base note of evangelical brainwashing. This prosperity preaching or health and wealth gospel and other put money in the collection plate evangelical sermons started to rear their ugly heads in the 80s and grew into this kraken of Christian judgmentalism now in the 21st century. For those of us who are lucky enough, well, for those of you who are lucky enough to be unfamiliar with this type of sermon, it is in reference to this whole, if you have health and wealth, then God loves you. And if you're sick or poor or in need in any way, it's God's punishment. Now, I am not a Christian, but if you are... And your preacher or self-help audiobook or God's Prosperity podcast or radio show is spewing this garbage from the pulpit. It might be time for you to read up about wealth in your religion's book. But I stood in front of this woman in shock for a second and then tried to clarify, thinking maybe I had the wrong impression. And I asked what she meant. So she told me that if it was what the goddess wanted me to do, it would just happen for me if I was powerful enough. So, excuse me? I didn't say excuse me. I was just in shock. The woman was clearly into energy work and crystal and stone healing, using candle magic for meditation and manifestation. And she'd already explained to me that her religious trauma from an evangelical upbringing had really affected her. And yet she still carried this concept that rich equals good and blessed. And poor means you're doing something wrong and daddy God's going to punish you. So new age capitalist brainwashing at its finest, this horrible garbage that, oh boy, it really took off in the eighties during the satanic panic. It was a way to generate funds in the collection plate. You'd have all these self-help audio cassette tapes about how to make money with the Bible and real estate scams. It was, it was 
amazing, but it's even grown bigger since then. Well, she went on to explain how her particular new age guru had taught her that the way to prosperity was through manifestation. So let's quickly cover the terms manifestation and manifest from a witch's perspective. These terms were made popular more recently by the book and film The Secret, and they're used in popular New Age conversations to refer to the focusing of one's thoughts on a desired outcome. But witches have long used the term to mean various things. Uh, recently, we've adopted both the terms manifest and manifestation as a way to just quickly express the focusing of our energy, visualizations, our will, and our intent to create change in the physical world or within ourselves. But 30 or so years ago, manifestation often referred to spiritual forms or entities appearing in the physical world, like something you would conjure or a, a spirit you might uh, see in a haunted house type of thing. However, in the, in the instance of entities and forms, we now use the more descriptive term materialization, particularly because of how the now popular concept of manifestation is put forth in the secret. Okay. Now, of course, I know that manifestation is a legit concept and I'm assuming. Okay. It's a legit concept, but assuming you can think positive thoughts and light a green candle and win the lottery is a type of magical thinking that psychologists warn you about, not the magical practice of a witch. What I'm trying to create with the sanctuary is a very big, very complicated, intricate goal that involves the EPA, a large piece of property, and an income known to the IRS as abject poverty. The fact that I've gotten as far as I have is extraordinary and involved a lot of so-called luck and things seeming to fall into place. I have been manifesting this dream since the 90s. As anyone from Witch Academy can tell you way back when it was called PaganPath.com, and I wrote extensively about the sanctuary dream in the Pagan Path forums. Manifestation can sometimes be immediate, but sometimes it can take years or even lifetimes, especially for something this intricate and complex. What's the takeaway here? Well, if you have come from an evangelical background and are healing from religious trauma, and you've come to witchcraft or other forms of magic or spirituality that aren't quite in the mainstream, Keep up the effort to leave that toxic judgment behind. Relabeling prosperity gospel as manifesting abundance spreads that same toxicity. The same thing that we've all been trying to get away from. So I welcome your comments and questions, rants and suggestions, and thank you so much for listening. This has been a production of witchacademy.org in cooperation with practicalwitch.com. You can support the podcast through Patreon, or subscribe through any of your favorite streaming services like Spotify, Audible, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, oh, the whole lot. A special thank you goes out to my patrons for their support. Becky, Lindsay and Chris, and Arkansas's finest metaphysical shops, The Parlor in Hot Springs, and Strange Brew in Fort Smith. If you'd like to learn more about witchcraft, herbs, and tarot, check out witchacademy.org. Blessed be. <laughs>